We have um, some opening remarks that the chief is going to present, and then we'll offer the opportunity for media to ask questions. I ask that any media who's joining us on the conference line, please mute so that we don't get background noise. And when it's time for questions, we'll call on the different outlets so that we can um, offer the opportunity for questions and answers. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Chief Chuck Lavelle. Thank you, Tina. Um, thank you. I've got a prepared remark I'll read really quick. Thank you, media partners, for taking the time to meet with me remotely. I know your teams are busy as well with what's happening locally and nationally. This morning, I was sworn in as chief of police, and I wanted to share a few thoughts before we open it up for discussions. First, I want to again acknowledge former PPB chief Jamie Resch for her leadership and selfless act to step aside. She identified the need for PPB and the community to better connect so we can be begin to move forward and meet the public safety needs and expectations of the community. Next, I would like to thank the community members who took time to attend the press conference and share their thoughts and the many who have reached out to me to pledge support and feedback. I also would like to extend my gratitude and appreciation to all of the employees who work at the Portland Police Bureau who demonstrate care and compassion every day. We know changes are coming, and we have an organization comprised of professionals who adapt and adjust to meet the changing needs of our community. The work we will need to do together is significant, but I believe we can identify solutions that will work for our community and the Police Bureau. We are open to change and transformation, but we want to make sure that the change is meaningful and brings the long-term results the community wants. I look forward to working with community members, elected officials, and our PPB team to identify what the future direction and strategies will be. Thank you. Now I have time for some questions. So I'm going to unmute the phone. So I'm going to go through and um, I'll repeat the questions so that we can try and get them on here. Um, but I'm going to try and go through the different outlets so there's some organization and we'll try and, you know, get as many questions as we can in by noon. Uh, is there someone from KGW on the line? Hi, yes, sir. This is Mila from KGW. Hi, Mila. Hi. Um, so, Chief, I want to um, is there any concrete place and plan right now for what you're going to do with the officers who are being redirected from the GVRT as well as transit police. Will they stay on the force? Will they just be reassigned? Um, we're just looking for clarity in that department. So if we can repeat the question, or I can. Yeah. So the question was um, if there's any concrete direction on the um, officers with GVRT or some of the other units um, where they would be reassigned. Thanks for the question. Those officers will be reassigned somewhere within the police bureau. They'll remain with the police bureau. Um, those officers do great work. The, uh, the calls that they go on will still need to be answered, and we'll have to figure out internally the best way to resource to uh, manage those calls for service going forward. But um, to your question, we will uh, bring them back to the police bureau, reassign them, and uh, they'll be doing important work that needs to get done in the city. Is there someone from KPTV? Yes, uh, Simon Gutierrez, I'm here. Hi, Simon. Hi. Uh, Chief, uh, protesters have repeatedly tried to breach the fence surrounding the Justice Center in recent days. How do you intend to prevent a situation in which protesters could potentially occupy public buildings like we've seen in Capitol Hill in Seattle? So the question was about um, protesters have attempted to breach the fence outside the Justice Center in recent days, and what is the plan to prevent occupation of public spaces like we've seen in Seattle? Thanks, Simon. Um, our, our goal is to protect our buildings and protect the souls that are in the Multnomah County uh, Detention Center. There are folks in that in this building who we, we have an obligation to protect. Uh, we've got officers who've been working around the clock for two weeks straight who are accomplishing that mission for us. 
and it's, uh, it, it's an important life safety mission that we don't undertake lightly. Uh, we'll use the tools at our disposal to accomplish that mission. And um, yeah, the, the situation in Seattle is one that we, we definitely don't want to see here in Portland. Is there someone from the Oregonian on the line? Yes, yeah, this is Maxine, first team from the Oregonian. This is the time. Um, I wanted to find out if you're going to make any changes to the command staff, and also, how are you going to balance the needs of your officers and the jobs they do with the increasing uh, community and city council mayor's demand to reduce the size of the police force and cut out these specialty spots? So it was kind of a two-part question. First was what changes with command um, you have planned, um, but also how to balance the internal members um, with the needs, I think, or direction that might be coming with uh, city council. Thanks for that question, Maxine. You know, f for me, I'm looking at my team and evaluating kind of you know, what I need going forward. I have a great team right now. Um, I'm very happy with the folks I have in place to support me. Um, there are some things that I'm looking at to realign, and uh, the equity office is one of them. I think that's some of the most important work we do in the police bureau, and it has to be aligned um, as such to reflect that in the organizational structure. So I'm looking at bringing that kind of uh, up into the chief's office to report to me directly, most likely, um, in the very near future. Um, and what was the second part of the question? The second part was about internal members and with the changes and how to balance that oh. with the community or in some of the decisions that are being made. Sure. Well, we'll have to see what, um, what the council's decision is, uh, what we're left with resource-wise, and uh, best manage those resources to align with the uh, service we come to provide to the community. That's going to take a lot of listening, um, a lot of kind of realigning, looking at where the needs are, what resources we have, and uh, we're definitely committed to doing that work, to hearing the community, and at the end of the day, providing uh, the city of Portland with great police service. Thank you. Do we have someone from the Willamette Week on the line? How about, um, did I call it K2? Yes, hi, it's Joe English from K2, can you hear me? Yes, Joe. A uh, question about the, the term defunding police. That's one that everybody's throwing out a lot. What does that mean to you and what is your stand? What's your take on that? Is it necessary? So the question was um, defunding the police as a term that's being used. Um, what does that mean to you? And um, I'd miss the last part, Joe. And, and where do you stand? And where do you stand on, on that concept? Thank you, Joe. Um, I don't think any police chief wants the police defunded. Uh, the citizens of Portland, citizens of cities and towns and counties throughout the country need police services. There are things that happen that need to get responded to and investigated. Um, crime doesn't stop because of a pandemic or because of mass protests. Um, at the end of the day, people need good police service. And I think that's what the real call is for, police service that's just and meets the needs and expectations of the community. So I don't think defunding per se is the answer. We need to kind of right fund, right size, right align, uh, right incentivize, and uh, get people the police service that they want that makes sense for them and uh, is in the best interest of the community. Do I have someone from the Portland Tribune? Hi, uh, Chief. Thanks so much for the time. Nick Lesnick here. Um, I imagine you've been watching with the rest of the community the uh, crowd control tactics and debate about that. I'm wondering what your broad brush reactions are, whether you think changes need to be made, and what direction you would take them. 
So the question from the Tribune was about the crowd control responses, um, what your broad brush, um, what your, I just kind of forgot what he just said, sorry. Um, what your, yeah, what your opinion is about what's been happening and then what your direction would be. All right, thanks, Nick. You know, I, th I think it's important to recognize that there are thousands of, you know, peaceful, uh, I don't even like to call them protesters or demonstrators, but change agents who show up, Revolution, Revolution Hall, um, they talk, they message, they support um, a message of we want change, and they do it in a peaceful manner. They go to locations throughout the city, and they exercise their First Amendment rights. And there's a small group that come downtown and engage in activity that's you know somewhat problematic for for us, but I think for me, I want to give my officers the tools to do the job. And the job you know, we're asking them to do downtown is to protect the Justice Center. Uh, we really try to communicate to folks um, our intentions, um, the information they need to be safe when they're out there. And the ones who, uh, who don't comply or are resistant to doing things, we tell them, uh, we give them warnings, we tell them, hey, this is an unlawful assembly, or we, you know, we try to give them every opportunity to, um, to keep themselves safe. But I, you know, I, I want to give my officers tools um, that keep them from being in a situation where they have, you know, potentially physical confrontations with people. Do we have someone from the Portland Mercury? Yeah, this is Alex. Thank you. Um, and thanks for making this opportunity uh, available. Uh, Chief, I know you were involved in finding a program to replace Central City Concerned Sobering Station, Cheers, um, in, in December, I think. You were part of that team. It, it's something that Commissioner Hardesty has pushed for in the budget to find a replacement or something new to fill that role. Uh, I'm curious if you believe that program should be replaced, and if so, if it should be by the police bureau or a different uh, entity, and, and what you think the best replacement for that would be. So to summarize, um, the chief was previously um, engaged in some of the conversations related to the sobering center um, that was previously run by Central City Concern, and um, they, they would like to know your thoughts on that program and maybe who should manage that moving forward. Thanks, Alex. That was, uh, that was a loss when we lost the sobering center. That was a place where we could take people who were in need of sobering services, who were maybe out on the street in a position where they couldn't care for themselves, and um, a safe place for them was needed. I, I, don't, I think there's a lot of roles that the police don't necessarily have to perform. I think we really need good community partners who step into roles that are maybe better suited for them. That program was under the Police Bureau's budget, but it was actually executed by um, Central City Concern as the provider. So, you know, I think that's probably a, a real partnership question. Is there a service provider in the community that can step in and provide that service uh, to give us another tool to uh, take care of some of our most vulnerable uh, community members? Do we have someone on the line from OPB? Sometimes it takes a minute to unmute, so. Um, so I, I, I'm sure I missed an outlet. Is there anybody on the line who I haven't called yet? Yes, Lisa from Coin. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Tina. Okay to ask your question? Yeah, please do. First Chief, congratulations. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> um, unfortunately, not in person, but uh, so be it. Yes. <laughs> um, my question is, what's the biggest real change you'll make sooner rather than later that we would actually see on the street? So um, for the rest of the audience, what is the biggest real change that you would make sooner than later that we can see on the street? Wow, that's a good question, Lisa. I, I have some ideas and thoughts of things that I would like to see be different, but I, I think right now we're really at a place where we need to hear from community. 
we need to really uh, come alongside each other and talk about what things make sense. But in, in a very general sense, I'll tell you that I, I believe that, you know, community policing, which really started here in Portland, um, it's time for it to come back in a way where people um, in the communities know their police officer, where an officer has accountability to a community because they have to show up every, every day there and provide service and look the community members and business owners in the eye and, and work together to solve you know, the problems in that community. So I'm really looking uh, for ways to figure out what makes sense in realigning um, our police services to communities, to neighborhoods, to districts, and uh, put us in a position where we can partner with the community to kind of address some of the, uh, the neighborhood and livability issues. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen soon. It's going to take a, a lot of discussion, a lot of kind of structural um, examination and things of that nature. But I think um, that relationship piece, that trust that gets built when officers and community members are, are connected to each other and um, there's an alignment there is kind of where we need to get back to. Okay. And just a reminder, if you're on the conference line, if you could please mute. We're getting some background noise. I appreciate it. Um, was there another outlet that I missed that's on the line? We have a few more minutes. Are you able to take a couple more questions, Chief? Sure. Okay. Was there another question that hasn't been asked um, that someone had? Yes, I have a, oh. <laughs> okay, I had like three at once. Let me, I couldn't hear, though. Who? This is Maxine from the Oregonian. Hi, Max. Alex. Okay, we'll take Max and then we'll take Alex. And Lisa from Coin. And Lisa. Okay. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about your background? I know um, from New York, but uh, your education and really what got you into police policing. Okay, Maxine from the Oregonian was curious about, excuse me, your background, um, where you're from, and what brought you into policing. And someone's still getting background noise. Please mute if you can. It's hard to hear. Thank you. Well, this could be a really long answer, but I'm going to try to keep it uh, brief. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. Um, I lived in Brooklyn until I was about seven years old. Then we moved upstate, about two hours north of the city. Um, I, you know what really got me into policing was just service. My parents really instilled a sense of service in me at a young age. Probably the most informative uh, relationship building thing that happened to me when I was a kid was I was the neighborhood paper boy. And I remember I'd have to go around, and I was probably 12 years old, and I'd have to go around to everyone's house and collect money for the newspaper every month. And it, I realized, you know, going around doing that, I had 60 or 70 distinct relationships with the people on my street in my community and it was you know it varied from the person who cracked the door an inch and slid a check out to the person who's like hey come on in we're sitting down for dinner there's a plate for you at our table and I remember at that young age interacting with uh, my neighbors and my friends and the people in my community and that that really kinda I knew in my heart was kind of the relationships I wanted to have with people and there are times where I'd be delivering the paper, come home, then grab my shovel and shovel, you know, the, the elderly neighbor's driveway so they could get out if they had to in the morning. And, you know, I had keys to the neighbor's house because when they'd go on vacation, I would, you know, watch, water their plants, uh, you know, collect their mail and things of that nature. And that sense of community stuck with me throughout my life. I joined the Air Force at 19. Uh, put on a uniform and decided you know, I was going to serve my country. Did that for four years, active duty, two years in the reserves. And then um, I worked for the U.S. government um, doing some foreign military sales stuff after the Air Force. And then uh, I finished my criminal justice degree and I'd always wanted to come back to policing. And uh, I had the opportunity when I was 28 to move to Portland. And I applied with the Portland Police Bureau and I uh, put on a uniform again and started serving the citizens of Portland. But to me, uh, probably going back to 12 years old, I've always been in service to people, community members, uh, strangers. Um, and it was just, 
I think what I was designed to do, what I was kind of called to do. Okay, I think we had um, Alex next. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, Chief, yesterday the Chief of Police in Minneapolis announced that the city would be pausing their contract negotiations with its police union to kind of reconsider the entire contract and what the community wants to see in it. I know you can't really speak about specifics in the negotiations that are kind of on pause right now in Portland, uh, but I'm curious if you have any overarching goals or aspirations that you'd like to see in a new contract going forward with the PPA? So the question um, boiled down was whether or not you have any goals or aspirations with the contract with the PPA. We know things have kind of been put on hold, but I guess bigger picture. Mm. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. That's not something that's on my radar right now. But I will say that I do know officers here want to serve the community. We've dedicated our lives to service. Uh, we raised our hands and said, hey, we're going to serve the community. And it wasn't to say, you know, when times are good, when they love us, when they pay us a lot of money. It was just, we're going to serve the community. We're public servants. So, I mean, as far as the contract goes, I think those things will get settled in the process that those get settled in. But I, I want uh, Portland police officers going forward to know that um, it, it's about service. We'll need a contract. Those things will get worked out when they work, you know, when they work themselves out. But, you know, going forward, it's really about, you know, providing good service to the citizens of Portland, uh, the community members, and um, I think the, the contract stuff will kind of take care of itself in time. I think we have Lisa from COIN next. Yes, thanks. Chief, what's the mayor told you he wants? So the question was what the mayor's told you he wants. You know, I've had very brief discussions with the mayor um, due to a host of different issues, uh, timing, um, some family issues that he um, unfortunately had to deal with. So we haven't really had time to have much in-depth conversation, but I do know he wants a Portland Police Bureau that is aligned with serving the public. He believes in the city, he believes in this police bureau, and um, he and I will have more time to have more in-depth discussions, but I know he wants uh, a police bureau that that's really has a heart for serving the community at the highest level. I think we have time for one final question. I believe we had Nick Budnick next in line. Yeah, thanks a lot. I'm curious, uh, uh, Chief, with your experience in the schools, what do you think uh, is lost by producing uh, police there or pulling out SROs, what is your sense of um, what that relationship in your ideal world would look like? So the question was about, given your experience as an SRO, um, what the change with the SRO program, um, you know, looks like and what, you know, what that loss is, is what I'm hearing, or what we might need to do differently. You know, one of, one of the things I came away with from my time as a school resource officer was great relationships with youth. You get to, to be on their turf every day, and it's different. Uh, you're in their hallways, you're in their cafeteria, you're uh, at their football games, at their basketball games, and they see you every day. So they get a sense of who you are as a person, how you treat people. They watch you and get a, a sense of you. And I think it, it's, it was really, for me, an opportunity to make connection with youth. You know, we're at a point today where that uh, opportunity has gone away, but I don't think that's the only opportunity. I think it's important for us as a police bureau to look for other opportunities to still connect with young people, to listen to their voices, to show them, uh, to show them really our heart and our humanity. They'll hear and see a lot about policing just on social media, on TV or what's going on in the country right now. But to me, it's that one-on-one -on -one relationship, an opportunity to spend time uh, with an officer that really is uh, super impactful and informative. So we just have to look for ways where we can recapture that, and um, that's what we'll do going forward. I wanted to ask, just real quick, um, 
follow up on uh, talking about the mayor. Today's the budget vote. Can you talk? I think you've gone this a little bit, but can you talk specifically about the budget vote and how that will impact the police? Because there's, there's definitely been talk about shifting funds. And so we had a question in the room about um, the budget. There's a vote today and um, what that means and how that might impact police. Yeah, today's budget vote will be impactful in some form. I think we're going to have to wait and see what the final decision is. I do know there are people who have been working very hard um, in the mayor's office and the city commissioner's offices. I've been on the phone with the city commissioners and the mayor's office just trying to, uh, to really advocate for the police bureau. And uh, the, the decision is going to be what the decision is. I, I think we'll have to look at it and see what position and what posture that puts us in going forward. And we'll have to uh, look at how to best align our resources to still provide public safety services. Thank you, Chief. I just want to acknowledge, I know you got sworn in this morning. We wanted to provide media with an opportunity. I know it's a little unusual from what we normally have. We're still in a pandemic. So we wanted to be able to get the live stream and get some um, questions answered. We will certainly find opportunities in the coming weeks um, for you know additional media opportunities. But I hope at least this helped today to get some of those basic answers on for you to get a chance to meet the chief. Yeah, I just can have a quick yes. closing. Yes. So the chief wants to provide a little closing. So. Thanks to the media members for being here today. I appreciate it. I wish we could have done it in person, but under the circumstances, I'm glad we still had this opportunity. I just want to let people know that we have some really great men and women that work at the Portland Police Bureau. I've spent the last 18 years working alongside of them. I've seen them leave their houses in the middle of the night, the warmth and safety and love of their families to go out and investigate um, homicides and just horrible, tragic things that have happened to people. And I've seen them give their heart to this city um, for really for the people of the city. And I think sometimes we talk about units and budgets and uh, positions and, you know, what gets lost in the translation sometimes is that trickles down to real people. So I just wanted to leave that with you today and let you know uh, the Portland Police Bureau has people that love this community, care about this community, and are going to press forward um, and serve this community. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, everyone. And um, we appreciate you again spending the time. Good to see you again. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's been a little while. I know. Yeah. Got to hang out with you and uh, Chief Alvaro. Chief Alvaro, yeah. So, yeah. Right in this room, I think. Yeah. Thank you. You have another meeting.